This is Renee Billups and welcome to my Irie Kitchen where as always big things are happening. In honor of the Christmas holiday, I figured I'd give you a special treat. Today we're going to make, yes, Jamaican black cake. That's right, rum cake. The rum cake that I make that I suggest that you don't eat and drive <laughs> and you'll see why when we're finished. Um, over here I have all of the ingredients that you're going to need. I have eggs, flour, brown sugar, bacon powder, lemon juice, molasses, butter, vanilla. I know some of you might be saying, why is there cream cheese there? You'll find out <laughs> a little later on. Cream cheese is not typically a part of the dish, but that's why it says I do it my way. I, I read up how I feel is going to work for me. So I'm going to say this before all the Jamaican people out there start inboxing me about how your granny used to do it and I'm not doing it the way your granny used to do it. I'm so sorry, <laughs> but we're doing it Renee's way. <laughs> um, but either way, rum, and then we also have the fruits that's soaking in red wine. And that's been soaking in red wine for about a good um, few days, few days. And so... I'm going to get all these ingredients together. I'm going to set, settle, um, separate these things, and then we're going to get bacon, okay? And don't feel any way if you see a little white fluffy thing running behind me. I do have my dog, and he's loose, and he's sitting in the hallway looking a little, um, like, I don't want to be bothered. Okay, there he goes. <laughs> okay, I'll get the stuff together. Okay, so everything's separated. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with what? The butter and the sugar. You've got to cream your butter and your sugar. So I have one pound of butter and you'll notice that I have two sticks unsalted and two sticks salted. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to it uh, a little later on so it really doesn't matter if you wanna use all unsalted, all salted or whatever, that's just my preference. But you're gonna add salt to it anyway so Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> so we're going to add all four sticks to the um, mixer. Now, back in the days when there wasn't such a thing as a KitchenAid and a hand mixer, <laughs> people used to use their spoon <laughs> and whip this butter up. And there's even some people who are still doing it. And you know what? My hat's off to them. <laughs> However, I got a mixer. <laughs> I'm not whipping butter by hand. So, <laughs> whatever floats your boat once again. <laughs> so this is all four sticks of butter. And then I have two cups of brown sugar. Do not use white sugar. White sugar just takes away from the flavor of the cake. So brown sugar. You can add them in together. I think I had this a little too damp at the bottom. Some of my sugar stuck, but that's okay. And you're gonna put it on slow. Let it kind of incorporate. And then keep cutting it up, cutting it up, cutting it up, scraping the bowl with your rubber spatula and just let it whip until it's well incorporated, fluffy, and you don't get those thick granules of sugar. Please, I tried this once. I understand. I'm one of those ones that love organic foods and I love the more natural, the better. Don't use sugar in the raw or that organic sugar because the granules are so, so thick, it will never mix out. Tried it. Failed. <laughs> There we go. And pretty much we're just gonna let it, we're just gonna let it mix. Every once in a while, we'll scrape the side of the bowl down 
And um, in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the dry ingredients and mix them up together. And I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so before I mix in my dry ingredients and tell you exactly what they are, let me move these out the way. Woo. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and scrape that bowl down a little bit. If you take a look down in there, it's nice and whipped. I made sure that that butter was, at, was completely at room temperature so it was nice and soft. You don't want to take your butter out of the refrigerator and then try to whip it. As a matter of fact, you might want to have it out for a good three, four hours so it'll really get nice and soft so you can get that consistency. So I'm going to cut this off a little bit. And the whole reason for scraping the bowl is just so that if there's sugar at the bottom or butter that's not incorporated, you can kind of make sure that you get it all. So you just scrape the bowl. You, you definitely can do this with a hand mixer also. I mean, you, it doesn't have to be a, a stand, whatever it is. Whatever you use to fluff up your butter, it's your butter. Fluff it how you want it. <laughs> and that's it. I'm going to cut this back on and let it roll a little bit. But before I cut it on and let it roll, because this thing is loud, I'm going to go ahead and take the dry ingredients and put them together. So, this is three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. That's it. Oop. Okay. In my hand, I have my husband's shot glass. <laughs> um, I didn't get the chance to go to my my storage unit where I keep my catering stuff to pull out my own measuring items. So you work with what you got. <laughs> um, so in this cup is a teaspoon of nutmeg, a teaspoon of cinnamon, a teaspoon of allspice, a teaspoon of salt, and two teaspoons of bacon powder <laughs> and so what we're gonna do is I mean that's simple for dry ingredients dump it in with the flour and mix it really really well mix it really really well and then set it aside that's about it and so I'm gonna mix this and then I'm gonna get back to cream in my butter a little bit more Trust me, it's not as hard as it, as it sounds. It's a really easy to make cake. And I like to think that if you know how to make a pound cake, you can make a rum cake. Pretty much the same steps. Except you put some baking powder in it and you don't put baking powder in pound cake. Same steps. Okay, so I'm gonna scrape this bowl down again and then we're gonna start adding the eggs. That's the beauty of making sure that your butter is completely at room temperature. You don't have to go through a whole lot of extra scraping and, and making sure as well, because it, it will blend and, and whip and melt the sugar and come out beautifully like, like this did. So that's just the important part. Make sure your sugar, your, not sugar, your um, butter is not cold. Okay. So, Scrape this off. So now we're gonna start adding the eggs. I have eight eggs, eight large eggs. And that's the reason for the lemon juice because when you're making a cake that has so much eggs in it, it has a tendency to kind of have an eggy kind of, I don't know if it's just me, but get this eggy kind of hint in my nose that I can smell and the lemon juice helps to cut that. So eight large eggs and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the eggs one at a time. So you're not gonna dump them all in there. You're gonna add one, whip it up a little bit, add the other, and make sure it's well incorporated, okay? So we gotta cut this on slow. Okay. That is one. There. Cut it up a little bit. Down a little bit. And you get the drift. We're just going to keep doing that for all eight eggs. And the last one. So for this last one, we're going to cut it up full speed and make sure that all the eggs are very 
very well incorporated, very well mixed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to work on those fruits. And I'll let you know what kind of fruits we have and what to do with it in a second. So let's finish whipping this up. It's going to kind of almost get a curdled kind of look to it, but that's okay. That's fine. Now I'm going to scrape the sides once just to make sure that the egg is mixed completely with all of the butter. And then we'll go on to the fruits. I'm going to scrape it, scrape it, scrape it, scrape it. Scrape it. On high it goes, and I'll get ready to do the fruit that's going to go in there. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we got the butter over there already creamed and set aside. And now we're on the other side of the kitchen dealing with the fruit. Um, so, the fruits that I have. I left it in this container because I wanted you to see that I did not do anything fancy. Some people cook the fruits. I don't really feel like you need to. The flavor is going to come through anyway. I'm going to open it up so you can kind of see down in there. Then I'll tell you what's in there. Okay. So, I have, and I'm by no means going to use all of this fruit. <laughs> Let's just put that declaration out there. I'm not using all of this. But it's great to have because New Year's is coming. I might want to make another cake. And it would have looked embarrassing if I went to the store and asked the man for an eighth of a pound of fruits or something like that. So I got a quarter pound of everything. So we have dates, regular raisins, golden raisins, currant, a little bit of prune. I know what you say prune do to you. <laughs> it's not enough to do that. And trust me, if you eat that much cake to eat all of that prune and it get that done to you, then you probably deserve it because you shouldn't have ate that much cake. <laughs> I'm joking. But um, so the currant, prunes, raisins, dates, dried cherries, and then I also, this is not typical, but that's just because I'm me. I don't like to conform to the culinary man. <laughs> I got, I threw some dried pineapples in there too. And so that's what these um bigger chunks are right here. And then they're soaking. Ooh. Oh, yeah, that's wine. <laughs> A little too much wine, but they're soaking in red wine. Typically in Jamaica, they use red label wine. They do. And then you might find some other nice, deep, sweet, dark red wine that you like and use it. I actually found that I like the taste of sangria. And I believe that it gives it the nice kick that I want it to have. It's not true to the wine. But like I said, red wine don't matter. Use whatever red wine you like. Just make it a sweet wine. And so I covered all the fruits, put it in this container, and I let it soak. You don't have to refrigerate this. You can store it this way so that can come however long you want to. It might absorb up some of the wine and you might want to top it off every now and then. You might want to even pour a little bit of white rum over it. But this is pretty good, much good to go for quite a while. Enough about that. I'm probably only going to use maybe about three cups. I say probably because once I mix the dry ingredients in, I'm going to look at it to see if it's where, how nice and fruity and chunky I want it to be. Some people put the whole fruits in there. I want the flavors to be more bold, for lack of a better term. So I'm going to actually go to my food processor and I'm going to chop some of the fruits up. And then maybe in the end, I'll throw a few scoops of the whole thing in there. So we're going to start off with about maybe two and a half cups worth and we'll see how it does. And then, of course, you make the necessary adjustments as to how much fruit you like. Okay. Scoop. Fruit and wine. <laughs> this is a quarter cup measuring spoon. I'm so sorry. 
didn't get the chance to go get my proper equipment that I needed. So four of these makes a cup. So four down, six more to go. <laughs> And I promise you, and this whole thing is probably eight prunes. So it's not a lot. Five, and then one more. Make sure I get some of those pineapple chunks. And uh, six. I'm going to take a little bit of extra of that wine. I don't want no more than prunes. And we're just going to pulse this bad boy up. We're not trying to make it into a paste or anything. We're just going to kind of rough pulse. Chop. Let's hope I have it aligned. Because if you've got a food processor, you know how aggravating that can be. Okay. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> it would be bad if it wasn't because then the liquid would all start coming out the bottom. Let me cover this fruit back up. I'm going to get some more wine and I'm going to pour it over it. And I'm going to tell you one thing. If any of you, because you know that we have some new things coming. You see that I put it on my page today. If any of you decide that you want to make this black cake. And then you send me a picture of your, um, your version and how you did it. Let me know. I will definitely be willing to share that with the world. Because you know what? Irie Kitchen is not just mine. It's all about yours. I mean, it's all well. It's all good. Everything's all right. It's in your kitchen. You do it how you want to do it. And I'm glad to share it. So, we're going to pulse. <laughs> well, I do want it really fine. I think that's about good. Let's see what you see what she looking like. Yep, looking good to me. Looking good to me. All right. So, what we're gonna do now is this is gonna go over here to the mixer, and I'm gonna mix that in to my egg and butter mixture. Okay. We're going to add the dry ingredients at the very end, and that's just going to basically get folded in. We don't want to overmix it at all. All right, now, <laughs> so um, the fruits are here. We have this molasses. Now, the reason we're going to also add brown into the, to the black cake. As a matter of fact, if you look close at the bottle, you'll see a rum cake right there on the bottle so this is going in there but the reason why I haven't added it yet is because I'm also going to add molasses molasses gives it that uh, uh, dark color also so if I add a whole crap load of this then go add this the cake might come out to be the color of this thing here and that's not really what I'm trying to do so we're going to add the other ingredients first and then the brown in last okay I'm adding an entire cup of molasses, which just so happened that this is an eight ounce um, bottle. So I'm going to add this whole bottle in there. Okay. I'm adding just a splash of lemon juice. I'm really not measuring it. Just a, just a splash. There we go. I'm going to add about a tablespoon's worth of this vanilla. It's the same cup I used earlier. Oop, a little more than a tablespoon, but that's not going to hurt nobody. <laughs> I try my best to stick within a guideline just because I'm teaching people to do stuff, but I don't like the measure. I really, really don't. <laughs> I'm more of a dump cook type of person. So let me dry my hands off. Okay. So, molasses in, vanilla in, lemon juice in, and we're going to dump this fruit in. 
Remember, this was two and a half cups of fruit. I'm gonna put this down in the sink. I'm just gonna dump it in. I have to try to maneuver it out a little bit. Like I said, we'll kind of eyeball it. We'll see what it looks like once we're done. Now I'm just gonna mix it just to incorporate it. It smells so good in here. <laughs> Smell like rum and wine and fruits. But that's good. <laughs> Ooh! Don't do that. <laughs> I splattered everywhere. Don't do that. Not that fast. Okay, I'm going to scrape down the sides. And I think that's about all the mixing I need to do with it. Now it's going to be time to fold in our dry ingredients. So I'm going to remove this completely from the mixer, mix, remove the bowl from the mixer, and then um, we'll work on getting the dry ingredients in. Down you go. I almost sinned against you. <laughs> I almost did you wrong. Almost forget the most ingredients. How in the world y'all going to make rum cake and don't put rum in eight? That makes no sense. <laughs> Well, I don't measure rum either. So, I am using Jamaican Red Nephew rum. If only you can smell this through the phone. I don't measure, but for your sake, <laughs> I'm going to use a shot glass, two shot glass worth. The beauty of this cake is if you don't like the alcohol content and you want to pump it up after you bake it all you gotta do is pour some rum over it that's it yes my cake is gonna be strong you have been advised don't eat and drive <laughs> so i'm just gonna mix it in a little bit get it and fold it in mm. oh it smells so good in here I'm going to tell you what it smells like. If you ever had rum and raisin ice cream, that's what it smells like. Well, real good rum and raisin ice cream. All right, so you remember what this was, the flour, nutmeg, cinnamon, allspice, and all of that good stuff. And what we're going to do is we're not going to add it all at one time. We're just going to do a little at a time. So there you go. Fold it in. Fold it in. Okay. A little more. Fold it in and put this down so I can actually hold this bowl. And then I'm going to put the last little bit in there. Alright. And give it a good mix. Try not to over mix it though. You just want to mix it just enough to make sure it's mixed good. You don't want to treat it like you're making a fluffy white cake or anything like that. You want to, or well, even that, you don't want to overmix. So just don't overmix it. <laughs> Smells so good. So I think I want to see a little bit more fruits up in here. So I'm going to put another cup in here of the fruits. I'm not going to blend that cup though. I'm just going to pour it right in. Make sure. 
Basically what I'm doing is just looking to make sure that it's all mixed in, that's all. Make sure the chunks that I see is fruits and not flour. All right. So, another cup of fruit with some wine up in it and the browning. Got this fruit right here. Now I'm going to try to avoid the big chunks of prunes and everything like that because of course you don't want to, it's okay to be eating and get a raisin in your mouth. You don't want to be eating and getting a pole prune. <laughs> that, wouldn't be, that wouldn't be fun. So let's try to avoid the big chunks of prune and big chunks of pineapple. That's one, remember, I'm using this quarter cup so I have to do four to make a cup. Oh, I got a piece of pineapple in there but that's okay. Try to take that pineapple out. Two. I yeah, know that's three, ain't it? Count, girl, count. Four, and that makes it one. And I'm just gonna take a little extra wine. There, go. there we go. This cake cooks for a very long time, so that's okay. A little extra moisture ain't gonna hurt it. it ain't gonna do no different than what it's been doing. So now it's time. For the brown and you see it's already looking a little bit like a gravy color <laughs> that's what the um molasses did so you're just gonna put i'm putting about a tablespoon's worth i'm gonna mix it in and pretty much just until it gets to the color that i want it to be you know, looking at it i already know i need more because even though I said I wait till the end, I do like for mine to be nice and dark. I don't, I don't like a lighter color rum cake. So that's probably about two tablespoons worth. But once again, it's whatever floats your boat. This is my variation on this cake, of course, but like I said, feel free to do whatever you need to do. I'm adding more browning. Almost every island make this cake. They just make it. Everybody's got their own different way. I even had um, a version of this cake where um, they used the chocolate cake batter. It was delicious. So, hey, whatever works for you. I got a lot of cake mixture in here, so I'm probably about up to five daggum tablespoons right now. <laughs> but I think this is probably going to do me. It smells so good in here. It's not even funny. You think, Charles, I should go a little darker? Uh, yeah, go a little darker. <laughs> All right, so we just used the whole dang on bottle. <laughs> well, it wasn't a whole bottle. The bottle wasn't full, but... So I'm guessing that that was probably about six tablespoons. Like I said, we like ours darker, but you don't have to... I like the taste of it. Some people don't like the browning, to put too much of the browning because it gives off kind of a slightly kind of a, uh, for lack of a better term, bitter edge to it. But I think in this cake, it works. It actually enhances the flavor. I mean, you're dealing with alcohol. A lot of alcohol. So, okay, I got more brown and I'm going to get it. <laughs> We keep 
this stuff on tap <laughs> because it's great for cake. One thing I love about the Grace Browning versus a kitchen bouquet or something like that is because the Grace Browning is just straight burnt sugar. It does the same thing the kitchen bouquet do. You can use it to add to your chicken, your gravies, your sauces, your soups, or whatever it is, but it does not bring the flavor that the kitchen bouquet and stuff do because those are mixed with vegetable enhancements to give the vegetables or whatever a flavor where this is just straight burnt sugar. So I think I'm gonna stop there. Now I did use a bottle. <laughs> yeah. Now we cooking with Crisco, like my husband says. <laughs> there we go. Now I'm gonna get the pans ready for it and stick it in the oven and call it a day. So let me clean this mess up and get the pans and we can and I'll show you how to do your pans. So what I, I have some melted butter here and what I'm gonna do is just put about a tablespoon worth in each pan. I have a um I believe this is a 10 inch pan and a six inch pan. And so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just I'm gonna use the paper towel just because I don't want to use my hand and get butter all over it. I don't suggest you use um spray because the spray has a tendency to kind of why that fly on me? <laughs> has a tendency to kind of cook like like it's frying and the outside of your cake will start burning and so do the butter and the flour and it'll help to be to act like a barrier between the pan and your cake and won't burn your cake as quickly because this cake is going to be cooking for about an hour and a half so you want to make sure you try to keep it um <laughs> as safe as possible my oven is already preheated at 325 degrees and so what you're going to do is you're going to butter it up dust it with flour Try to get it halfway to the pan. Don't fill it up too much because it's going to rise. And then put it in your oven about an hour into cooking. Start checking it. I'm just using paper towel because, like I said, I don't want butter all over my fingers. And I find paper towel works great. A clean sheet of paper towel will do the job. There we go. Another interesting idea that you might want to do is, let's say you don't want to use these cake pans, but you have muffin tins or cupcake tin. And I'm going to show you how I do my little frosting later on. But you have cupcake tins or muffin tins, and you want to have little individual um, cakes, go ahead and throw them in a cupcake pan or a muffin pan, depending on how big of a serving you want to give out. Do some mini ones if you want to. Because if you put more rum than I put in mine, you might definitely need a mini one. <laughs> <laughs> knock some folks out and then we're just gonna take the flour tilt the pan to the side and just dust it with the flour that's it kinda do the pan around see how it's getting evenly coated it's kinda and there you go. And you can pour it in the other one. Dust it into the other one. Dust the extra flour off. And then do the same thing. Do the bottom first. Oh, you know the bottom will get nice and covered. Then you'll turn the pan and dust the flour on the side. And then just see it. Knock it and allow the flour from the center to kind of go around for you and coat it for you. Okay, and the rest you want to just knock in your sink <laughs> and wash it down. That's all. And there you go. A buttered and floured pan. And I know they got the spray that says it comes with the flour. Don't use it either. Use the butter in your own flour. You wash my hands off. Then comes the cake. And like I said, try to get it halfway into the pan. Don't go any, um, any further than that. I do have a lot of batter. If you don't want to make this much cake, then split it in half. You know, split the recipe in half. You don't have to make this much. But I plan on having some for my family. 
and then I plan on sharing. So I might actually have enough batter for two pans. Let's see how that's gonna work. Nah, I think I'm, well, I was gonna say three pans, but I think I'm good. Scrape this a little bit into this other pan. Mm-hmm. Just use this and just kind of make sure I get this little bit of brown and it didn't mix out that well. It is a little more than half the pan, but I think I'll be good. All right. Now, into the oven. And like I said, about an hour into cooking, you give it a check. My oven's at 325 degrees. I'm going to throw these in the oven. I'm going to clean up and get ready to show you how I make that frosting. All right, so here we are one hour and about 45 minutes later and our cake is done. So I'm gonna pull out the second one here. Basically, you know, you're gonna take a toothpick or something. I have little teeny skewers and you're gonna poke that in the center and you know when it comes out clean, that means it's done. Of course, the smaller cake did get done a little faster, um, just because it's smaller. I'll be sharing that with someone else. That one came out nice and clean. Oh, they smell so good. And I know that they're going to be even better. So before we can pour any wine, do any frosting or anything, these have to be completely cooled. So that's pretty much what we're going to do. We're going to wait for them to get completely cooled. And then when we come back, I'll show you how to do the frosting. And we'll go from there. So until then, a few hours. Well, maybe several hours. But okay. Mm. And perfect color too. <laughs> the cake is cooled. And what I did was I left it in the same pan. And I poured um, rum all over it, pretty much just cover the top of it. It's going to saturate, it's going to soak up all the rum, so you won't be able to tell that I even poured rum on it. But the good thing about that cake is you can continue to pour rum on it. It'll soak it up. It only adds to it. It won't become wet, soggy tasting. It only adds to the potency <laughs> and flavor of the cake. But like I said, don't eat and drive because this definitely the alcohol content is not cooked out. <laughs> So I'm gonna show you how to make this frosting. Now typically, once again, I don't conform to what's typical. A lot of times I just like to add flavor. So I like buttercream frosting and I like cream cheese frosting. And I figured, hey, cheesecakey kind of taste. That might taste good with the rum cake. Hey, I tried it, it worked. So <laughs> we're gonna do a, like a half and half thing here. Half butter, half cream cheese. So I have um, four sticks of butter here and one um, basic 16 ounce, I'm sorry, not 16, eight ounce container of cream cheese. Yeah, that would be a lot of cream cheese. And so what I'm going to do is just going to add it. It's been softened. See? Nice and soft. Left it out for room temperature. <laughs> nice and soft. And pretty much the same process as how we creamed the butter. Okay, so I'm going to add all of the butter in with the cream cheese, and then we're just going to whip it onto a fluffy. I'm going to whip it, whip it, whip it good. <laughs> uh, don't use margarine, please. I know, it's less costly cost a little less and it might be a little on the softer side and whatever whatever don't give us as great a flavor if that's your only option then of course use it but I just find that real butter works a lot better because <laughs> butter makes everything better <laughs> so, that's it four sticks of butter one block of cream cheese I'm going to put this up here on this mixer, and we're going to get the whipping. Pull this a little further closer to me. Oh, it goes this way. Put 
that's the beauty of making sure that it gets softened because you see we just started and it's already nice and creamy <laughs> of course you're gonna do the same thing like with the sugar you're gonna scrape down the edge of the bowl you're gonna whip it whip it whip it because you want it to be nice and <laughs> fluffy Cut it up on high. You can use a hand mixer. You can use your hands, whatever works for you. Um, but just make sure it's nice and fluffy. Scrape the sides down every now and then. We're not trying to dissolve any sugar right now. So we don't need to wait as long to scrape down the edges. And we're not going to whip it nowhere near as long either. So because you can see that it's already looking like a nice fluffy frosty. <laughs> Make sure you get real good in the bottom if you're using a tabletop mixer here like I'm using so that you um, make sure there's no butter under the bottom because there's nothing worse. Yeah, butter makes everything taste better, but straight butter on your cake don't taste good. <laughs> And you can wind it with butter down in the bottom, so make sure you scrape the bottom real quick, too. <laughs> Not gonna say it smells good. <laughs> it smells like butter and cream cheese. <laughs> but once we add the little extras to it, then I will. I have it here. Let me cut it off a little bit. This is three cups of confectioner sugar, vanilla, and I'm gonna grab the white rum, because we're gonna put a little bit of that, um, white rum in the frosting too. So I told you, eat responsibly <laughs> because everything has rum in it. <laughs> everything does. So I'm um, gonna grab the rum, let this finish whipping up some more and then we're gonna add the sugar to it. It's a simple, simple frosting. I mean, absolutely simple. Butter, cream cheese, confectioner sugar, vanilla, and a splash of rum. I mean, you can't get more simple than that. <laughs> So it's nice and whipped. If you take a look at it, you'll see that it's even gotten that nice little thick, creamy, I don't want to say opaque, but it's, it has a beautiful kind of, well, what would I say, off-white? <laughs> I don't know. It looks good. <laughs> How about that? It's nice and whipped. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop it down a little bit, and I'm going to add... Yeah. I've, some people sift this and if you've exposed it to a lot of moisture then of course you really do want to sift it but this hasn't been um, so I'm just going to go ahead and pour it in I'm going to do half at a time though I try to do half at a time watch me shake it in the half the whole thing goes flawless okay no I did half okay <laughs> and then whip it <laughs> make sure it's very well incorporated scraping down the sides remember the confectioner sugar is powder so, if you cut the mixer on, on blast right away, you get a powder, a face full of powder, and you might start coughing. <laughs> I've done it, I know. Okay. That's looking good. I'm going to lower it again and add the other half. Take a look at it, see? I'm not really making my frosting for the purpose of covering the whole cake because I really don't prefer to do that. Not everyone likes frosting on their cake. I'm one of those ones where I don't like a whole lot of frosting, so I kind of like to put it to the side. Maybe I did get, no, just loosen it up a little bit so it will pour. It was packed tight in there. And pour the rest. Ooh, that's the rest of it. So that was three cups. So, going to do the same thing. Start on slow. On low, <laughs> not on slow. <laughs> and just, as the powdered sugar starts to absorb the liquid, we can pick the speed up some. I'm going to scrape the sides down some. Don't want to add too much sugar. It's up to you. 
if you're planning on frosting the whole cake, then you might want to add more sugar because you might need it to be a little thicker consistency. You'll see what I'm going to do with mine, though. I don't, I don't prefer it. In that. I just like to put a little dab on the side and let them either put a little dab on the side or I'll make it loose and then drizzle it over the whole cake, kind of like you'll do a cinnamon roll or something. But I'm not going to put a whole lot. I'm not putting a lot of sugar either. If you prefer your frosting to be a little on the sweeter side, then you might want to add more sugar. I just want it to be lightly sweetened so I can actually taste the butter and the cream cheese. Perfect. I want to be able to taste the butter and the cream cheese. Some people like it really sweet, and if you do, that's fine. Well, that's good. Let me whip it up a little bit more. The cake itself is sweet. I mean, we put two cups of sugar in there, and we put... um. A whole bottle, <laughs> eight ounce bottle of um, molasses in it. So the cake itself is sweet. So the frosting doesn't really need to be sweet. And the little unsweet but creamy taste really balances well with the taste of the wine and the fruits and the sugar and everything that's packed in that cake. And that's the importance of making sure that your butter and your cream cheese comes to room temperature. It's nice and whipped just about done i'm just gonna say about i'm gonna actually go for about two tablespoons just because i want to taste the vanilla and it's not a whole lot else going on up in here so i'm gonna throw in the vanilla i'll taste it and see how i feel about it i'm not measuring the room either <laughs> that's the thing and I know y'all probably going to watch this and think to yourselves, man, she a rum head. She drink a lot. I actually don't drink a lot. And I'm one of those um, ones that a little fruity margarita once and I'm good to go. <laughs> I'm, not, I can't, I'm not a strong drinker person, but I can handle it with this cake. So basically, I put about a shot glass worth in there. If you want more, add more. If you want less, add less. I'm going to taste it, and if it's not where I want it to be, I'll add a little more. Taste it. Put a little bit more vanilla and a little bit more rum. Let me get a spoon. Okay. So I'm gonna put a, one more spoon of vanilla. I don't think I'm gonna do overdo it this time. Probably just two two tablespoons worth. I'm assuming that this spoon is a table a proper tablespoon. Looks like it should be. Ooh, maybe that's a little more than two tablespoons, but okay. seeing my husband's eyebrows. <laughs> He's like, wait. Okay, I definitely know I'm not in any more of that. Basically, all we're doing, whipping it up. I'm going to make sure that what I just added is well incorporated. Let me scrape the edges down a little bit. Make sure I'm getting it all in there. Then I'm going to grab the cake and show you what I like to do. So, voila! <laughs> There's the rum cake. I, I was started to try to cut it, but I wound up cutting that slice a little too small. And again, maybe not too small. Um, but if you look at it, it's nice and bounces back with you. I poured the what I did was I left it in the actual baking pan and I poured rum all over it. You can use rum or you can use red wine. It's up to you. I use rum. Um, so maybe that slice too big too. I'm having issues cutting, ain't I? Okay. I'm going to let that slice sit there. What well, I have this little contraption here, and yeah, I have a pastry bag, but I don't feel like breaking out the pastry bag. I got this thing from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> and so um, what the theory is, you put the frosting in, and then you just squeeze and push this down. It comes with different different tips, just like your pastry bag would. And 
you do whatever you want. So what I like to do is just put a slice of the cake on a plate and just put a nice little dab of the frosting. If somebody wants it, they'll eat it. If not, they'll leave it on the side of the plate. I don't, I'm, I'm not big on the whole conglomeration of frosting piling up on rum cake. Other cakes maybe give me some whipped frosting. Yes, I would die for it, but not on rum cake. I don't want to take away too much of the flavor. So I'm just going to use a spoon and um, scoop some of this frosting down in there. Mm, buy all meals. Use a pastry bag. I'm, I'm cheating today. I'm going to use this little thingamabob and put it down in there. Now, of course, if I'm doing this for a whole lot of people, I wouldn't be using this little thing. My pastry bag would be loaded up with stuff and I'd be good to go. Because then it would be defeating the whole purpose. Lock it on. Mm. Mm, good. Okay. So, I didn't grab a fork. Look at that. Look at it. Mmm. That is rum cake, fruit cake, black cake, whatever you want to call it. Cake heaven. Right there. <laughs> Let's brush it up a little bit. Great idea. Also, if you're from the islands and you want to bring in a little bit of your flag unity, take a um, few drops of col food coloring. And uh, I'm sorry I ain't thought about it before because then I could have I would have done it for you. But like Jamaica is the black, green, and gold. I could have dropped a dot of, of green, a dot of gold, yellow, or and a dot of black. And swirled it around and we and made a little colorful um, decoration here on the side. But I'm just going to take this and just, I'll lift it up. Should I go on the top or on the side? What do you think, Charles? On to the top? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Okay, all that does top of the side. Okay, so instead of going all over the top, we're just gonna make a little dab in the center. Well, that's kind of a big dab, but anyway, <laughs> that is kind of a big dab. Maybe I should go across the whole thing. I'm the one eating it, I'll just leave it that way. All right, that design, these little plastic tips, maybe you shouldn't go with the number nine because this actually is supposed to make a rosette, but that didn't work out that way. That looks more like a glob of something. Nah, I'm not going to say, but anyway, the frosting is, is still good. And next time I'll use my pastry bag and not the contraption I found at the Dollar Tree right here maybe this would be good for stuffing a cupcake or something definitely not for frosting so now you know i've tried something out in front of you too <laughs> let me grab a fork because of course i gotta taste it i don't even grab a spoon or nothing i don't know what i'm thinking <laughs> okay mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. just a little bit like that mm. Look at that. Mm. <laughs> this is so good. You got to try it. Try it. Make it for yourself. And then let me know that you did. I'm giving him a taste. <laughs> Above your head. What do you think, Charles? Yeah. Mm. Remember that really big chunk of pineapple that I left, <laughs> that I let get in there? <laughs> I'm not going to show you my mouth, but I just so happened to get it with that slice. I have it with that slice. So I guess it did wind up being mine. 
Mm, this is so good. Well, try the recipe out. It's a Jamaican Caribbean tradition to have this cake during the holiday times. You know, there's a lot of people who love it but don't know how to make it or are scared thinking it's a daunting task or whatever. It's really not. It's not. You don't even have to make this frosting if you don't want to. That's just something I like to put on it. But try it and enjoy it. And then let me know that you did. And thank you for stopping by my Irie Kitchen. Now, what I do want to say before I let you go, up and coming, we'll be having an e-magazine, which the information is, is there in the conversation area of the page. Um, we'll also have some new seasons coming up. There's so many great things that's coming up. And I'll keep you up to date on what's going on soon. Um, but just stay with me. I've been away, I've come, I've gone, I've come, I've gone, I said I was here, I said I, I'm not leaving or whatever. So here I am in your kitchen again saying I'm here to stay, but give me the opportunity to prove myself to you that I'm here this time. And guess what? You won't be sorry. I'm here. Try this cake out and I'm about to do a video shortly for sorrow. So you get to get that into your holiday too, okay? All right. The email address for any information is Kitchen at gmail.com. That's where you can get your questions, comments, concerns, share your recipe, share what you did, send me your pictures, ask for your copy of um, your, your subscription to the magazine, whatever it may be. Um, Kitchen at gmail.com. Okay, thank you. I'm going to go eat my cake now. Mm-hmm. <laughs>